Welcome back, everybody, to Volatility Trading Strategies. So we are witnessing a truly historic time in the market right now. Not to get too hyperbolic on you here, but these data points will be quoted for generations to come. For all of you traders out there who are here to see it, there may be some war stories told to future generations. And for those too young to be investing right now, when they grow up, they'll see it on their charts, and they'll wonder what it must have been like to trade through such chaos. On March 16th, 2020, the VIX index closed at a record high of 82.69. As you can see, that's higher than the worst day during the financial crisis in 2008. You can see the two bookends there, the only two times the VIX has ever closed over 80. Now we may not be done yet, we'll have to see if things actually get worse from here on out, but it's already historic. Now unfortunately, the vast majority of the investing world is on the long side of the market, so they benefit when the stock market goes up and they get hurt when it goes down. As of now, and again, this might get worse for all we know, but this is a crash of about 30% from the all-time high just a few weeks ago. And that takes the S&P 500 all the way back to where it was in February of 2017, over three years ago. That chart alone should be a screaming warning sign against buy and hold investing, but we'll save that for future videos. What I want to talk about today is, how do we know when the fear has subsided? And for those of you who do have cash on the sidelines, when is it safe to allocate it? So subscribe to the channel below and sign up for my free newsletter. We talk about these things all the time in the VTS community and you're always welcome to join us. So let's get into this. So this will probably be a running series because there's many metrics out there that I look at to get an indication of when it's okay to start getting bullish the market again. And the first, something that anyone out there can track on their own, is the VIX futures. Now VIX futures data is available in several places for free. You can get it directly from the SIBO website if you want, but my preference, this is taken directly from the website vixcentral.com. I'll link both in the description below so you can check back often with them. Now the VIX futures here is an open market where traders can buy and sell futures based on their expectations of where volatility will be at various future dates. Each of those points represents a monthly expiration, April, May, June, all the way out to November. And I always have the VIX index highlighted on the chart as well. That's the green line there. So for example, you can see the June contract there, which is trading at 5209. That's where the bulk of traders are pricing volatility three months from now. And you can see the October expiration cycle showing 34.45, significantly lower than where we are now. But this chart with all the VIX futures plotted on it is called the VIX futures term structure. So this is where it gets interesting because the shape of that VIX futures term structure can be used effectively to gauge the pulse of the majority of market participants. We don't have to guess, we can see what real dollar purchases are pricing in going forward. So I'll show you two sides of the volatility spectrum to illustrate when traders may feel more comfortable getting bullish the market versus a period where they should probably be in their safety positions. 2016 and 2017, for the most part, were very low volatility periods where the stock market just consistently went up. So what you're looking at here is a snapshot of the VIX futures term structure at the beginning of 2017. And I'm sure you've noticed, this picture is a lot different than the first one I showed. Here, every subsequent VIX futures contract going out in time is higher than the previous one. This is an upward sloping VIX futures term structure. Now there's a specific term we use to describe this situation where further out in time futures are higher than the shorter dated ones. It's called contango. You may have heard of this before. Contango is present in the VIX futures market when everything is relatively calm and stable. The reason for this is there's always a risk premium involved with trading because we don't know what the future holds. Nobody does. It's always going to be uncertain. So under normal market conditions, traders need to be compensated for taking on that elevated level of future unknown risk. When things are stable and people are acting rationally, we need to price in the potential for higher volatility further out in time. Volatility should be priced higher six months from now than just one month from now. That's a long time and a lot of things can happen in between. So this upward sloping VIX futures term structure, in contango as we say, is the norm. And this is when the stock market is most predictable and tends to log its best gains. So if you're looking for a stable market, you are looking for an upward sloping VIX futures term structure that is in contango. But now let's contrast that with what we're seeing right now. The current situation is the complete opposite of that one in 2017. In this one, we see a downward sloping VIX futures term structure. All of the further out in time futures are lower than the previous shorter dated ones. And this situation has a term as well, it's called backwardation. 
Essentially, backwardation exists during times of elevated fear and uncertainty. If we isolate just those front two months, we can call these M1 and M2. You may also see people call them VX1 and VX2, but I like to use M1 and M2. Looking at just those two months, the higher the level of backwardation between them, that is to say the higher M1 is compared to M2, that represents extreme uncertainty and fear. Kind of like we're seeing right now with the S&P 500 crashing 30% in a few weeks. If a trader understood the VIX futures term structure and how to interpret that slope, they may have been able to exit their stock positions before any of the major damage was done. That is, after all, the key to long-term success, benefiting when the markets are going up and mitigating losses when they're crashing down. This tremendously ugly-looking chart is the S&P 500 in 2020. The all-time high was made on February 19th, and of course a few weeks later, here we are. My main stocks, bonds, and gold rotation strategy called Tactical Balanced exited our stock positions and moved to safety on February 21st, which is right there, really before any of the mess materialized. When warning signs start to develop, it is always best to just move to safety because we don't know what the future holds. All we have as investors is our careful analysis of the market and to heed warning signs when they flash. Moving out of MDY stocks and into IEF bonds avoided a major crash that might take the S&P 500 a long time to recover from. So contango and backwardation in the VIX futures term structure. Were there any warning signs in the shape of the curve? Again, isolating the front two months, M1 and M2 like I showed you, this is the level of contango and backwardation in the last one month. When I exited my stock positions, contango was down to just 2.4%. That level is the 26th percentile of all values going back to when the VIX futures launched in 2004. That means 74% of days had higher contango, basically a more stable market 74% of the time in the past, and that was three weeks ago. It's gotten significantly worse since then. The warning was there. On February 21st, we were already dipping into the more dangerous lower boundary of readings. And of course, every day since then, it's just gotten worse. Now I should mention here, I use a multitude of volatility metrics to guide my trading decisions. Moving to safety was a lot deeper of analysis than just the VIX futures. But like I said, this may be a running series because there's so much we can look at here. If you really want to dive deep and learn about the volatility markets, that's what we focus on in the VTS community and you're always welcome to join us anytime. So the title of the video, how do we know when the crash is over? Well, we don't really. Tomorrow is just as much a mystery to me as it is to you. One thing I do know though, if I rely on my personal emotional predictions, I'm probably going to be wrong. That's why I like to rely on quantifiable volatility metrics to guide my trading decisions. So can't we just flip that analysis upside down? If the VIX futures moving from contango to backwardation was a clear sign of trouble, and it has been for two decades, by the way, not just the past few weeks. But wouldn't that mean that a move from backwardation towards contango again is a sign that the market may be normalizing? Depending on your own level of risk tolerance, maybe you don't need to see it get all the way back into contango, but certainly some healing, a flattening of the curve, and a reduction of the current extreme backwardation level would be nice to see. If you want a little cheat sheet here for the thresholds, this is showing the percentile rank of M1, M2 VIX futures and what the corresponding contango or backwardation level would be at that percentile ranking. So the 50th percentile, right there in the middle of all values going back to 2004, would be a contango rating of 6.31%. That's dead average. Highest contango ever was 33.75, and the highest backwardation ever was minus 33.03. And then there on the right, just for your interest's sake, I've also included the VIX index as well. Again, average VIX, highest VIX, lowest VIX, and various levels in between. Right now, we're easily inside the 1% of the most extreme readings. Steeply negative VIX futures term structure, and in deep M1, M2 backwardation. In order to start getting bullish this market again, we're going to want to see these levels normalize a little bit. When that will be is anybody's guess, but again, that's why I like to use quantifiable volatility metrics instead of relying on gut instincts and personal market predictions, which are always unreliable in the long run. So if you like this kind of analysis and think it might help you make some money, or perhaps just not lose quite as much money? Claim your free trial on the website and join the VTS community. It's a daily blog, dozens of volatility metrics updated daily, as well as all the trade signals for each of our ETF rotation strategies. Stay safe out there, everyone. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.